Hi everybody, happy Sunday. Today is ruled by the sun. So you'll see I'm wearing yellow. I either even have um, yellow eyeliner from Unframed Beauty. And it's super cold here in Venice, California, for Venice, California. It's 60 and cold, cold, maybe a little below, and it's very, very windy. And so when you get the chill in your home or any time that you want to be nurtured, it's a really good idea to have good scents, <laughs> good scents at home in both meanings of the word. Good sense at home means you declutter, and I'm doing that. You can hear, you're going to hear the wind. There's like things clacking, and it's kind of exciting, and it makes you want to be grounded and safe at home. When the wind outside or the energy is, 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 is a lot, sometimes it's good to root yourself at home. So you want to root. Hey, Cass, in Russia. So you want to root yourself with like root vegetables, maybe squash. Um, I've been cutting up squashes <laughs> and roasting them with a little bit of coconut oil and salt and having that with my salad. So it's raw and it's some cooked. So it's a raw fusion. And that is my favorite way to eat, especially when it starts getting cold out, because that means that I get to cook things on the stove. So when I was thinking about what to eat, I was definitely craving arugula because I just got back from the desert and I found amazing fruit but I didn't find a lot of organic greens where I was staying. So I had a lot of Nepali's cactus and purslane, which was very healthy and amazing, but I came back just wanting deep leafy greens and I want to, I wanted arugula, I want broccoli, I wanted romaine and I've been having that. So I do have romaine when in doubt and you don't have a lot of time or let's say you're on the go, eating this, like putting some balsamic vinegar with a little bit of my favorite Nuvo olive oil um, with some salt and chop, chop, chop. I like my chopped arugula. The really cool thing about chopping your leaves is it makes it easier to eat. It also releases the aromas and the essential oils um, in the food, which is why the other thing I was going to talk about every single morning and sometimes in the afternoon, I make my chai. So I use whole spices, whole cardamom, whole clove, whole cinnamon, whole peppercorns, and also fresh ginger, and I model it. And when you do that, you get the aroma. So even before you drink your chai, you're getting like the scents, and they you have this olfactory like memory of goodness. Please make your chai when you're in a loving mood, because then every time you do it, You'll smell it now, then when it's brewing on the stove, while you're drinking it, and it's just such a fantastic thing. And this recipe is in my latest ebook, Doobies Do the Holidays. When you click it open, you will see love wafting out from, from the pages. You will see, I can't explain it, you will know once you get it. Hello, Gary Darling and Amelia Darling, and we have Cass Darling. So I wanted to show you this because this is one of the way I, ways I get beautiful scents in the house incense, sage, palo santo. Sometimes I light a disc of charcoal and I put sage or lavender on it. And you'll see in the background, I always have um, aromatherapy going. And in the winter or when it starts to get cold, I love sage, um, clove uh, essential oil that I get from mountain rose herbs and maybe a little splash of orange. Sometimes I do peppermint. Um, and it really makes such a difference for your home. Having it smell nice, that's one thing I don't talk about. When people walk into my home, they're like, ah, when I walk into my home, I want to feel that. When I'm going inside and then outside and, and I want to just feel um, the beauty uh, through my nose. And I recently just experienced... Um, when I was staying uh, at a beautiful little place, a little hot spring spa place, which had no spa, spa facilities, but it did have the hot springs. And everything was good until I realized they were cleaning the rooms with chemicals. Because every time a guest left, the housekeepers went in and I would sit by the pool saying, mm. so of course I had to talk with the manager. It's really important, you guys, to only use natural healing supplies, Simple Green, Myers, uh, Next Generation, or Seventh Generation, or whatever it's called and then there's so many on the market there's so many you can learn how to make yourselves and it's part of contributing to your home to a life that is clean clear and bright 
and having our homes be clean, clear, and bright. Having, you know, having a vegan home or mostly vegan aside from some ghee. My house has just doesn't have any kind of weird energy of like death <laughs> and it doesn't have, it just feels, it feels really good. And we got Jessica Rose and the shepherd's, shepherd's path to the Kingmaker. Sending my love to you and your beautiful father, Herbie. Herbie's great. I got to call him after this. So a couple of things inspired me besides the arugula. Today I got inspired by this Cajun seasoning I ordered from Mountain Rose Herbs. And then I found uh, when I went to go put away some of my Go Raw sprouted seeds, they send me enormous bags. And I love this. I have seeds every day. Seeds go really well with fruit. Seeds go really well on a salad. They fill you up longer. They're giving you the protein. They're giving you the crunch. They're a wonderful addition, and they're not as heavy as nuts. So I was putting some bags away, and I saw my reserve supply of, I have a couple cabinets of just like the just in case, you know, and the just in case things get weird, or as Jeff calls it, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> so I have, you know, healthy food. And I did find a can of chickpeas and I, and I just thought I want those. So I thought, okay, let's listen to my intuition. And I, I rinsed and drained them. So this is just chickpeas. I'm a huge fan of soaking your chickpeas overnight and then rinsing them and draining them and then cooking them for a couple hours on the stove. That's my preferred way, but I didn't do that. And I had the can and I said, oh, we're going to go crazy. <laughs> Hi, Isabella, love. So we're having our little green juice cocktail. Oh, I didn't have that in the desert either. I did drink a lot of water and I did add electrolytes. I wanted to show you guys the electrolytes I've been having. Light show, L-Y-T-E. Three packets are in here and it felt like it changed my life. Normally I go to the desert and I just feel like, like all the life and moisture and beauty has been sucked out of me and these really helped. So... Here is just something that I do, just so you know that this is running at all times in my house. So I will, I forgot to turn on the other light. I wonder if it's going to make a difference. I'm going to do it in a second. But the, what I like to do with romaine to make sure I eat it and to make sure it's ready for when I'm hungry, because that's the key for eating raw or eating healthy, is you want to have food that you can grab easily. So if this is, if you wash or when you wash romaine, it's going to be wet. And I don't have a salad spinner, so what I do, and I wouldn't have one in my travels, is I shake it, and then I put it in a towel, and I have a towel at the bottom, and I let it sit like this in the fridge. So it gets dry, and it gets crispy, and when it's time to eat, all I do is chop, 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 put it in a bowl, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle things, and then it's ready to go. So this is going to go in my refrigerator, and it will be ready for later. Dulse, you know, dulse, hemp seeds, avocado. That's like a go-to. Dulse, hemp seeds, avocado, salt, maybe apple cider vinegar, a little olive oil, and you're good to go. So, yeah, it, and there's something called trace minerals. I I just made, I had a bag of everything, like a big bag of my cutting board and my knife and my bowl and my salt and my vinegar and little nut butter and seeds and all the things that I would take with me in, on a road trip. And I decided when I came back from my road trip that I really wouldn't unpack the bag. Cacao nibs are in there, all my Four Sigmatic Chinese, Chinese herbs, everything to make tonics a creamer, oils, different oils. And I left the bag because next time I want to go on a road trip, I just grab the bag. So my trace minerals are in there. It's another form or way of having electrolytes. It's a bottle and it's literally called trace minerals and added to water. It really, really helps you. Ooh, walnuts and raw honey. You know, that might be a nice little a crumble of walnuts. And honey's really nice for this because arugula is bitter. So the trick is you add cranberries or raisins or a titch of honey. Um, so that's excellent, an excellent suggestion. Um, 
Thank you for loving seeing my desert posts. It really inspired me to take more road trips because I feel like a different human when I get out of Dodge. And I brought some things back from the desert. I still have all of these persimmons. I still have the persimmons, the Hachia persimmons, which are getting ripe. And that will be a video, we can make a pudding. Then I also have this pomegranate, which needs to be eaten, dates, and these Thai bananas, which are supposed to look like this. I make smoothies out of them, they're so good. So I also have these two little tomatillos. So maybe when I make the, um, you slice these and you, you fry them in the pan, maybe with the chickpeas, I have garlic and I have pepper. I love, I love heat when it starts to get cold. That's why I'm making the hot chai, or I wanna have raw food, but I wanna have the heated fusion uh, with it. So now, what are we gonna do? You know, when you do the chickpeas, you could you can make your own Cajun seasoning, or you can get from Mountain Rose Herbs, which I love that company. I love the company. I love their website. Um, paprika, onion, thyme, cayenne, sea salt, black pepper, amazing organic, all organic, all fair trade. And so you could just do chickpeas and this, but you could also do, um, it's traditional to do a little flour. So you could use like a little gluten-free flour, which I might do if it's handy. If I didn't move it out of somewhere, which I didn't. Maybe a little buckwheat flour, just to give it a little like consistency, a little thicker consistency. We can try it, I've not done it. Um, this is a gluten-free flour. Let's try this. Let's be experimental and creative on Sunday because Sunday is all about generosity and creativity and play and being kind of larger than life, maybe wearing yellow eyeliner, <laughs> being glamorous, being fun. So Cynthia, I just made vegan Caesar salad with black garlic, cashew dressing, and cauliflower popcorn. There you go. Like that's all you need. And maybe a little hot, uh, creamy, hot, chocolatey tonic, which is going to happen today. I'm going to make a carob pudding tonic. <sighs> you can see I'm all excited. So let's mix up the, uh, let's do a little mixing. I'm also decluttering today, which is making me really happy. Did you guys ever go, why, what is going on here? <laughs> Did you guys ever go away and you, you're away and you're like, wait, I know this has happened to you, to you. Where you go away and you're like, wait, I have a lot of stuff with me, but this is all I need. I don't need anything else. And then you think about your whole house with stuff. And you're like, I have too much stuff. I want to be lighter. And I have decluttered. I think I'm the decluttering queen. And my friends, especially my friend Vicky in New York City, she's like, how could you have anything to declutter? And I was like, I don't know. Life happens. Things happen. I welcome them in. People send me things. I buy things. I no longer fit in things. <laughs> I like, don't want to wear things. Um, I have changes. I think I have a lot of changes of my not personality, but like how I express myself and creativity. So I was a raw food chef, a private chef, and I had a lot of extra things and I made a lot of fancy desserts and I found an entire cabinet of like all of these cute little heart-shaped tins for making like, I used to make pink cashew cheesecakes in a heart shape or I would, and now I'm like, I was gonna get rid of them, but then I was like, maybe it, these, these things will inspire to make, to make some cute videos for and with you guys. So we'll see. So let's put in the chickpeas. It's just a can, very unusual in my kitchen, but hey, <laughs> hey, hey, we're gonna just put a tea bowl a teaspoon, two teaspoons of flour. It's gluten-free flour. There's so many different flours, buckwheat flour. You don't have to worry about what's happening. Um, I feel lighter when I travel too and more energy to focus and less, there's less like bad thoughts. Um, and so I figure maybe there's too many like things in my house holding energy that I'm not aware of. So I'm going around and I'm seeing about that. I'm putting a lot of spice. It might be too much. We don't know. We don't know. And then we're going to use coconut oil to cook these. And we could chop up onions. We could not. What do you guys want? 
Everything's better heart shaped and everything's better pink. So I have beet powder, I have cashews, beet powder, cashews, pinch of salt, some vanilla, a little bit of water, maybe a little lemon juice, zzz, blend coconut oil. Coconut oil is important because it solidifies when it's cold. So you can make the cashew cheesecake filling thick and then you make some kind of cute date flax crust, date walnut crust, date be creative crust, press it all in, pour it in, chill it, and you're like, you have a cute little cheesecake. Hi, Ida. It's the first time you're seeing me live in the UK. I'm giving you such big hugs because I have a feeling you guys are on lock, locky down. And so this is a perfect time to do this. You're finally catching me live too. So that's amazing. We have, we have, because I see a lot of regulars, a lot of my live, my live beasts. Look how sweet this looks. There's something about the flower that just made it feel so decadent. I guess I could taste one and see if it's spicy enough. Yeah, I'm not happy for you. Okay, we're going to need salt. Oh, but it's good. And more seasoning. Yeah, so... Here's the thing, they can make you stay at home, but they can't make you unhappy at home. You can like brew a loving cup of chai. You can brew, um, you can look at my old videos and catch some good energy. You can learn how to do something new that you maybe have always wanted to do. I don't wanna go outside right now anyway. It feels like the wind's gonna blow me over but I can go outside, so I really feel for you. So I'm gonna ask you, are you allowed to go out for a walk? I'm not sure I could comprehend that. More spice. And then we're gonna get out my uh, Our Place pan. I was a sucker on Instagram for this um, pan that I really like. Um, there's one thing I don't like about it, and I'm gonna show you. So this girl decided to come up with a pan that you could do everything in, and I'm really, really a fan of it. I love it. It's pretty color. It's great nonstick. This is the lid. There's a little thing where you could rest your spatula there. Really cool. And there's a steamer lid. But can you see what's wrong with the steamer? Anybody guess why I don't like this? And it can be used and it's totally legit, it works. However, what does it not do? What's the problem? But actually, it would be nice right now I could cook the chickpeas at the bottom and then steam some broccoli on top, little pieces. It can only be a little bit. It can only be, the problem is, is that's not a deep steamer. When you eat vegetables, like we eat vegetables, you want a deep steamer because you want to make a lot of them. There you go. It's too low. Um, you're free as the wind in Texas, and I'm concerned about Ida. I know in France and London, there's a lockdown. So I don't cook with oak, uh, olive oil. I did when I was in the desert because that's what I had, but it changes the molecular structure of the olive oil and then eventually it's gonna clog your arteries. So coconut oil maintains itself. Olive oil is gorgeous, but you wanna drizzle it after. <coughs> Lovely to do. Okay, we're cooking. Um, it could use a little bit of fresh garlic. What do you think? What do you think? I had a boyfriend from London once who said, what do you think to that? He had different ways of speaking, and I, they still pop up in my head. Just goes to show that people, food can leave your body, but people in their words never do. Garlic is good, right? Okay, yams are good. I just came home like craving the greens and butternut squash, which I made for my friend Jenna yesterday. And that was really nice. So Jenna Zoe and I are going to make uh, videos. We're gonna talk about human design and the North nodes. It's really been one of the most life-changing things that I have ever come across. There's three biggies, feng shui, raw food, there's four, Okay, let's start over. Feng Shui, oh my gosh. When I learned about Feng Shui 
I thought, oh my gosh, there's a name to what I do naturally. We all do it naturally when we are being intuitive. Our homes need to be in harmony for us to feel harmonious. Our homes need to support who we are currently. And I am going to start talking about feng shui, you guys. I, part of the one, decluttering is the first thing you do. It goes to say that 27 items will change your life, or nine a day, or three a day, divisible by three numbers. So anyway, that's feng shui, change my life. Raw food, why didn't anyone ever tell me about this? Astrogeography, okay, yeah, you could be doing all the feng shui, all the raw food, all the good things, all the yoga, but if you're living on a hard planetary line, you kind of need to know it so you can help yourself navigate it or navigate away from it. That's astrogeography. And the North Nodes, da, 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 the most potent, efficient way to recognize not only your dharma, the things that will bring you joy. Talk about sparking joy. I mean, if you do North Node things, it makes your whole world light up. Opportunities come to you. So my North Node's in Taurus. The South Node, direct description of your shadow behavior that definitely has tripped you up in this lifetime, <laughs> I can guarantee. So when people watch my videos, cause I made a little mini course on it, you could just get your video for your North Node and your North Node house placement. You can look on my website and it will tell you how to do it for free, look it up. And then you can know what makes you happy. So when you're listening to the video, you're like, yes, yes, that makes me happy. When I do that, everything's good. And then when you listen to the South Node, you're like, oh. I've done that, and I call it the South Node Cringe. So we got garlic, we got butter-flavored coconut oil by Nutiva, and I love it. And I'm gonna turn this on in, um, yes. So, buongiorno, Chef Sunny D. <laughs> that sounds like Butch. I don't know if that is Butch, but he calls me Sunny D. And then um, Catalina, Amazing. I love your videos with Jenna. It's projector power. We're both projectors. Can you talk some astrocartography? Had a general astrology reading two years ago and asked about this. I was told my best line is in Vegas. This doesn't resonate with my soul at all. I'm East Coast now. So here's the thing. And the reason I came up with the do-it-yourself astrogeography on my website is that I too knew that certain places were good. But that's all I knew, California and India. But there came a point where I wanted to know, like, well, more. Like, what about the rest of the world? What about, I don't know, I just wanted to know how to do it. So I taught myself how to do it. I studied with someone. And then I made a course about it so you guys can do it yourself. So I do sessions for people. But there's also an easy way to figure it out. And so Las Vegas, but there's a huge arcing line. So if you have, and you should know what line it is. Like, what is good? Is it Jupiter? Is it the sun? Is it um, Venus? Maybe if you're feeling lazy, you don't want a Venus line. And I talk about that in my course. Maybe if you quick to anger, you don't want a Mars line. But if you need a little fire and drive, you do. Maybe if you need to like come out with your creativity and your feel more joy, you know, and, and, and I would say like the sun makes you feel like self-worth, like you've got a good, healthy ego, you know, so you want a sun line, but there's four different angles for each line, right? One's going to be good at home and one's going to feel good out in the world and career. And another angle is just you and how you're seen. And another one is relationships for each of the planetary lines. So I think it's, if I had to say the first thing, so the first thing I do is I look at people's North Node and their North Node house placement. Then I look at their astrogeography. Then I talk to them to see what their energy is like and what they need. And then it goes from there. Um, you like my sweater? So this was had when I went to Paris. It was five years ago. I went to this store, Merci, where I got my Paris bowls. And this, and a, I have a, a long, like, gray printed skirt that goes with it. So it makes it reminds me of Paris. And it feels so... I don't know, Parisian to me. Hello. I hope you're doing wonderful despite the dualistic forces of the world appearing a little less balanced right now. Let it in and let it go. What I say is that commune 
with people that make you feel good and do what you can do in your own environment. Like bring it on home, focus on your own plate is the best idea. And I've said this and I'll say it again, unplug, unplug from the news, <laughs> unplug, unplug from Instagram if you have to. Um, you need a session with me. You can email hello at daradubinet.com if you don't see any sessions available. And big hugs, Cameron. I feel ya. I believe it was Jupiter. I'm close to my Saturn line now, but I'm a Capricorn rising. So there you go. That's a really good example. Sometimes um, the need for the sea or your north node will dictate, like if you have a Capricorn north node, you need a, maybe a Saturn line, which rules Capricorn, to pull you into your Dharma. And that goes against some astrogeographers who would say like, yeah, you don't ever want a Saturn. But I actually think Saturn has nutrients and lessons for us. And maybe we need to study or have discipline. Like, it's just good to know what it is and know when it's time to go or know how to call in. What I also talk about is let's say you do live on a Saturn line, but you want to feel more sun energy. Then you look and find a place that you love that holds sun energy and you put pictures of that place on the wall. You have a screensaver on your computer. You watch movies from that place, follow influencers from that place, eat the food, listen to the music, and you can transport yourself there. I'm the Capricorn too, Gary. Nothing's going to take away my piece too. I need to make your curry plantain recipe. They had plantains in the desert. Are you ready? We just turned the fire on. So like having fire and having these smells and playing and really making it easy. Like I don't want to be fussy in the kitchen. I want to be like simple, quick and cleaned up before I even, oh yeah, now it's spicy, super spicy. <laughs> I want to be like cleaned up by the time I eat and then I have my dish to take care of and that's that. So you can go to my website and see what the heck I'm talking about. I explained it. It's all there. Um, it was my body of work for the past two years, both astrogeography and the North Nodes, and it's continuously helping people. Plantain smoothies. So don't don't they need to be cooked plantain? Oh my gosh, that's so so good. Plantain and cinnamon. I think I can get plantain somewhere around here. So we don't really need the cover, not so much. But um, you, you guys got to know what I was eating in the desert. I just need to share this with you because I, I really never felt better. And so I'd have my chai in the morning. Yes, I brought my fresh chai. Instead of whole spices, I brought the ground up spices and black tea. I brought my little strainer. I may, and instead of fresh almond milk, like I always do, I used layered superfood coconut creamer and I made chai every morning. And then I do a little work and then we're going to the hot springs and then I would cut up fruit, teeny pieces, apple, persimmon, banana, banana, blueberry, or any fruit I wanted. And then I put a dollop of coconut cult coconut yogurt because I did bring some with me. And then if you don't have a fridge, that's going to be tough, but you could still do the fruit thing. I drizzled, drizzled, I drizzled pumpkin seed oil and go raw, any kind of their seeds and cacao nibs. That's my trick. Gives you energy, magnesium, good for the heart, heart opener. And there was no sugar needed. All the sugar was in the fruit. Mix it up and the pumpkin seed oil is, and the cacao nibs are the trick. It's like nutty, earthy, and just creamy. And that was my breakfast, a nice big bowl. And then I would have maybe a piece of fruit, and I really wasn't hungry. That filled me up for a long time. And dinner was chopped onions, chopped tomatoes, chopped garlic, chopped green pepper, and um, either Nopali's cactus, which was such a treat for me. They're like the paddle, the leaves, they're like a paddle for cactus, and then you can cut them up and saute them, um, and then, or purslane. Both of those were very mucilaginous, which means they're very lubricating for insides, so kind of fascinating. It was delicious. Um, 
I'm feeling the call for LA, Venus, Saturn, Chiron. So depending which Chiron, Chiron is a key that shows you where you have wounds. And sometimes it will poke you um, and make you feel as if you, may, you have an illness <laughs> of some sort. But it will also help you to um, come to terms with what it is and heal, the healing line. Then Saturn is serious, and it depends what angle. Saturn Midheaven might be you becoming an authority and accruing money, being a little austere and maybe a little miserly. <laughs> maybe not. Like maybe it's just going to help you be the authority. When you're Saturn alone, that's different than if there's two other planetary lines near it. Saturn gets diluted a bit. And then Venus, come on. Like who doesn't want to be on their most beautiful line? So... Yeah, I want the tomatillos in it. I do like a sun ascending line. What do I think about a sun ascending line? The only time someone wouldn't be good with a sun rising line, like who wouldn't want to feel a healthy sense of ego, be seen for what they do, shine like the sun, all these beautiful kind of Leo today, which is Sunday. Today's like a sun rising day. <laughs> I got to rinse this tomatillo. So how I feel about the sun, I have never lived on a sun line. I think mine are in the middle of uh, Eastern Europe. I do want to go to a sun line, actually. But I think it's great. If somebody were, like, too egotistical, maybe you wouldn't want them on a sun line. But in general, or if, I don't know, if you don't really want to be seen, let's say you're super private, maybe that, maybe not. Um, oh, Montana or Wyoming sounds lovely, Gary. It'll be cold over there for you, yeah? I don't know why I'm putting these tomatillos in, <laughs> but I am. It's because I can. It's so fun to be an adult. I really like being a grown-up. I can do what I want when I want. No authority. So, yeah, we're going to stir, and then we're going to put these over arugula. That's insane. I just ate one. The flour just kind of made it exciting, like seriously decadent. So if anybody's just tuning in, I took a can of chickpeas, put two teaspoons of gluten-free gluten -free powder, some Cajun seasoning enough, taste it before you cook it, and then I put co uh, garlic, chopped garlic and coconut oil, and they're just kind of sauteing themselves on medium. I'm keeping my, my eye and stirring. I think you just kind of want to brown it so the flour is is uh, brown. So let's get my bowl. And it smells so good in here. That's the beautiful thing about raw fusion, too, is that you're having the nurturing smells. And I think that's so important. When you need to feel nurtured, if you are having any kind of anxiety, if you're feeling like you're not feeling loved or understood, you can take care of yourself. Like that's part of being a grown up is that we take care of the little child inside of us. That is if you have a cancer north node, gotta do that. I have a cancer moon, so like I'm the queen of nurturing. <laughs> I know what to do to make myself happy. I have my watercolors out, I have aromatherapy going, fresh greens something stimulating. I was going to say stimulating, sautéing on the... Uh, when you cut up the arugula, you can eat more. It's kind of like when you blend it or process it. It just becomes smaller. And um, a little bit of olive oil or vinegar. Um, I'm playing while I'm cooking. I 100% am playing. Mm -hmm, correct. 
I just had an idea. I think you have to leave room to have inspiration and go with it because I was like, well, here's going to be green. Then the chickpeas are going to be kind of thick and spicy. A dollop of coconut yogurt on top would be really great. Um, and maybe some cilantro for some brightness. Carrots would be good for color. Good one, Gary. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to eat this. Mm hmm What would be good too? An avocado would be delicious. This is gonna be a decadent nurturing meal. Where my home smells, we have some cilantro and some, yeah, it's still good, coconut yogurt or almond yogurt or whatever you can get your hands on. Um, so now we're going to put, let's see about this. The avocado gets brown and, and it's okay. You just um, take the pit out and slice off the brown bit on the edge. So can you see what I'm doing? Hmm. Kind of be aware. So you guys, I'm going to be talking about feng shui. Are you excited? Like, I did, I'm doing feng shui for this woman who, who's moving to a new apartment and she sent me her floor plan and I was able to do the bagua over it in my app on my iPad. So I'm like, people need to know where their love area is and their um, wealth area and how for people. And there's so many things we need to know about feng shui that it's coming. Yeah, I love adulting. I love being able to do what I want to do. Sometimes I'm startled by the fact that I don't know, I have to ask. Like, it's so fun. Okay, do you see this? Okay, let's look at that. You see my tomatillos? They're not spicy or anything. They're just kind of fun. You're waiting for feng shui? Okay, Cass, we got to figure it out. How best to do it? Um, and I don't know, I'll ask you this question, but the thing is, I'll save some chickpeas for later, later, later or for Jada. Um, the thing that I need to be able to do is share the screen. So I'm not really sure how to do that. I think I just turned on Siri or something. So I want to be able to show the floor plans and use my... Um, I know I can do that in Zoom webinar, but I need to be able to point and show, uh, point out things on the floor plan. I think it's going to be really helpful. And then my idea is to visit some of you <laughs> and walk into your homes and tell you where the energy stuck and, and um, all that jazz. I think it would be educational for everyone to see me do one person's. All right. Because we have spicy chickpeas and because... Getting probiotics into your system is always important. So the coconut cult, they do ship. I'm not a huge fan of the packaging for it, so I really prefer to buy it at the store. But pretty much you guys can get. Gary, I'm not cutting up carrots, but thank you for the suggestion. I could definitely like do a little julienne carrot, probably ship for color. Charleston, South Carolina. Don't you think that would be a cool show to watch? And I guess I would have some kind of RV, maybe something not too big, but one that I'm really, one that's pretty with like a Moroccan rug on the inside and just have it light and bright. Hello. Do you want to eat this with me? So I would come to a town near you and just kind of walk in, pull up and be like, hey, and we'd hug. And then we'd say, what? needs to change in your life. And I would find things in your home that were, that would show what's going on in your life. And when you fix the things that are going on in your home, it's a way of fixing things in your life. It's a cure. Got a problem? Here's a cure. Got a problem? Here's a solution. Oh, I'm so excited. A friend of mine does conscious nesting, but I'm so curious about feng shui and the bagua and directions. And knowing, um, it's kind of interesting, like I follow the Black Hat set to Tibetan, 
Tibetan, Tibetan Buddhist feng shui. And it's really about having, um, to me, when you know where your love and partnership area is, and then you look at it and you cure it, you know that you have taken care of that part of your life. Like you have physically put attention to and um, cured. And so you feel, it, it gives you this feeling of taking care and, it, and it, it affects you subliminally all the time. So if it's bad feng shui or things that are making you feel bad, you're feeling it just the same as if you sort it out. Um, and I really love it. And everybody does it differently. Mine is an intuitive feng shui, of course, an aesthetic, of course. Um, it has to look good and feel good. And I definitely, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in sharing. So I love you guys. Bon appetit. And I will see you for sure. If not sooner, I will see you on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I want you to please, please join me, Dara Dubonet, on Instagram. I am always posting stories of the food and the things that I'm doing. And then um, at the Doobie Universe, that's, that's just a really special place if you want to be a Doobie lover. <laughs> Big hugs, you guys. And thank you for being here with me in the Dara family. Get your greens on. See you soon.